Hello everyone, Magnus Carlsen is back in action again, this time at the second round of the 2018 European Club Cup in Greece. So uh, this time he is playing against Russian Grandmaster Vladimir Potkin, uh, who is a well-known uh, chess trainer in Russia. So Carlsen is playing for his club Valeranga and Potkin for Molodeshka. So in this game, Carlsen with white, Potkin with the black pieces, let's see how it goes. Carlsen opens with e4, e5 from Potkin, knight f3, knight c6, and bishop c4, the Joko piano, an opening that has become rather popular uh, the, these few years. Bishop c5 from Potkin, uh, a very standard reply, c3, knight f6, uh, d3, so d3 is now more commonly played as opposed to d4, which was more popular in the older days. So d3 protects e4, d6, uh, so preparing to develop this bishop, knight bd2, black castles, and b4 from Carlsen. The bishop drops back, bishop b3 from Carlsen, vacating the c4 square for a knight. So knight to e7, black is preparing c6 and d5, and also this knight uh, can bounce around to g6. Knight c4, we have knight g6, white castles, c6 preparing to strike with d5, knight takes b6, a takes b6, and a4 from Carlsen. Trying to fix this pawn on b6 uh, so that it will be forever a weakness. For example, if white can get it one more move, let's say black plays h6, then after bishop e3, this is quite a problem for black. Uh, he never wants to play b5 because then uh, this would destroy black's pawn structure. And this is the sort of position which you never want to give to Carlsen. So here after a4, black should have played b5, taking advantage of the fact that this rook is unprotected. So a takes b4, uh, a takes b5 is impossible because you simply take the rook. But here Potkin plays rook to e8, which gives uh, protection to the e5 pawn in case the e-file ever opens up for white. Carlsen plays bishop e3, so looking at the, uh, the fixed pawn on b6, so the queen always has to keep watch of that. Bishop e6 and bishop c2, so Carlsen avoids a trade of bishops, trying to keep more attention in the position. d5 for Potkin, striking in the center. h3, always a useful move, taking away the g4 square for one of black's minor pieces. Queen to c7, rook to e1, and h6, so black takes away the g5 square as well. e takes d5, and here knight takes d5 from Potkin. Instead of knight takes d5, c takes d5 is also possible, but that does uh, leave these pawns on the queen side double and isolated. So not very aesthetic aesthetically pleasing for black. And also knight takes d5 is slightly better because now this chases the bishop off this uh, g1 a7 diagonal. So after bishop d2, there is less pressure on b6. Bishop f5 from Potkin. So black is actually doing rather well, and he has managed to equalize the position. Carlsen plays d4, so trying to sharpen things up. Bishop takes c2, queen takes c2, e takes d4, and here knight takes d4, and c5, very logical move, trying to... Uh, well, this improves black's pawn structure, at the same time destroys white's. After b takes c5, b takes c5, black no longer has double pawns, and white's pawns are uh, isolated. But uh, the position is becoming a bit uh, sharp. Knight f5, queen to c6 from Potkin. So putting the queen on the nice uh, h1, a8 diagonal, and at some point, black wants to go knight to f4, threatening mate on g2 c4 from Carlsen, attacking this knight, but more importantly, uh, fixing this backward pawn on b7. So black can never go b5, and this pawn on b7 could become a weakness for black. Knight, to, knight d to f4, threatening mate on g2. Carlsen plays rook takes e8, rook takes e8, and mate is still, still threatened, so Carlsen eliminates the knight. And we have knight to e3, protecting g2. So here the idea of removing the defender with rook takes e3 doesn't work. Because after f takes e3, now this queen 
protects the G2 pawn. So after knight to e3, we have rook to d8 from Potkin. Carlsen goes rook to b1, and here h5 from Potkin, um, which doesn't seem to achieve much. And in this position, it is crucial that black plays actively, for example, here rook to a8, just looking at this a4 pawn. So this would force white to defend passively with rook to a1, or uh, force him to give up the pawn. So after h5 in this position, uh, this gives Carlsen too much time. He simply takes advantage with a5. So now this rook is coming to b6. We have h4, rook to b6, queen d7, queen b2, attacking the pawn on b7. So Potkin plays knight to d3. So this knight is going to spin around to b4. Queen b1, knight b4. So for the moment, this pawn uh, is protected. Queen to e4, a nice centralizing move from Carlsen. So now looking at this pawn again, queen d4 from Potkin. Well, if black tries to defend passively with, for example, rook b8, just simply hanging on to this pawn, then, well, white gets a very strong initiative after knight to f5, threatening to play queen g4, and this is just a great position for white. So queen to d4, and Magnus gladly accepts the queen trade. So he enters into a position, an endgame where he is up a pawn, with good winning chances. So here rook to d1 check from Potkin. King to h2 is, well, too passive. King to f2, the only way to play for a win. Rook to a1 from black. And here rook to b5 from Carlsen. So instead of taking this pawn, which would make things easier for black because, well, the black king is closer to this pawn and any attempts to bring the king in, uh, closer to the queen side would, uh, would run into, for example, rook g5. Then this pawn becomes weak. So here rook to b5 from Carlsen. We have rook to a2 check, king to f3, uh, g6, and here c5 from Carlsen. So now if this pawn on b7 falls, then White's pawns on a5 and c5 are going to be very, very dangerous. King g7 from Potkin, so black can only sit around and wait in this position. King e4 from Carlsen, abandoning this pawn on g2, trying to march the king over to uh, c7. Rook takes g2, rook takes b7, so now the pawn falls. g5 from black, trying to create some counterplay on the king's side with g4, and hoping that this uh, pawn on h4 would become quite dangerous. But this simply isn't enough. Uh, after c6, g4, uh, here c7, so threatening to simply queen. Rook to c2, king d3, so now Carlsen chases after the rook. Here if you play h takes uh, g4, then this gives black too much counterplay. And he should, well, with accurate play, black could even draw this game. So h3, h2, h1 is coming. Uh, white has simply given black too much chances. So after king d3, rook c1, king d2, well, Carlsen is just chasing the rook around. Rook c6, and here now he plays a6. So this cannot be taken because then c8 queen. So we have g takes h3, a7, uh, h2, and here it seems that black is also going to queen. Uh, but Carlsen just plays rook to b1, so stopping black from queening, and it was in this position that Potkin resigned the game. Because there is simply no way for black to stop uh, one of these pawns from queening. So this is a nice win for Carlsen to start off this tournament after his uh, short absence from chess. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Do subscribe uh, if you found this content enjoyable. I would greatly appreciate it. So that is all for this video, thank you for watching and have a great day.